What's up guys and welcome back to the channel. So I am at High Gear Cyclery in Emporia, Kansas right now. Tomorrow and Sunday I have La Grind Gravel Race. This is a two-day stage race. Tomorrow is 100 miles and then Sunday is 65 miles. I am camping at Base Camp Flint Hills tonight and tomorrow and then Kim is actually going to join me for after the race tomorrow and then we're going to camp. She's bringing Roberto. It should be fun. So right now I'm taking up like four parking spots. I've got the camper with me. I'm going to go into this bike shop and get my packet and try to spend as little time in there as possible because I don't want to get a ticket. <music> A half pound double cheeseburger. Jay's Burgers in Emporia. I get it every time I'm in town or try to get it every time I'm in town. They've got the best fries and the best burgers. It's like those, those crispy fries. Not the big steak soggy fries that aren't any good. They're mm. I mean, let's let's take a look at this burger here. Look at that cheese in there. Look at that cheese. Oh, it's fresh. So after dinner, I headed 20 minutes down the road to Allen, Kansas to camp at Base Camp Flint Hills. If you guys are ever in the area for a gravel race or you just want to do some camping, you got to check out Base Camp Flint Hills. I will leave the link to this place in the description of this video. My buddy Darius and his girlfriend Amy run this campground and it is phenomenal. So the next morning when I woke up, the first thing I did was I made some instant coffee and some oatmeal. And after a bad food choice before a race last year that caused me to shit, in a cornfield around mile 80 i've kind of learned that oatmeal is my go-to before races it was super nice out and the race didn't start till nine o'clock so i actually had some time to sit and enjoy my breakfast the conditions at the start of the race were absolutely perfect it was like 59 degrees sun was shining and you know it was it's 103 miles this first day and they actually had to do a reroute so hopefully everybody had the new gps but i think everybody did so as soon as we hit the gravel you know it's a pretty good pace people are moving along enjoying the weather the stoke is high so as the race started i made some new friends from topeka that's craig in front of me and then this is his buddy eric and eric is on a black lauf with white polka dots one of the sickest paint jobs i've ever seen on a bike eventually i caught up to this dude brian who actually dropped a bottle so fell off from the lead group and him and I would kind of work together for a bit and then sort of yo-yo uh, throughout the day. This area had gotten a ton of rain the past six days so for the most part the roads were in really good shape but there were parts in low areas like as you'd bomb down hills that were super muddy but overall I mean it wasn't too bad. So this is where the race really starts to get fun. We kind of hit this big climb and at this point we're now getting into the Flint Hills. We start to go on to some of the private ranches where there's literally open cattle ranges and this is what makes riding in the Flint Hills so special. It's absolutely beautiful and it's almost like you're on another planet. There were a lot of creek crossings on this route and most of them were rideable. I'm not sure if this one was rideable or not, but I wasn't trying to find out and everybody that I was riding with got off and walked their bikes across. This is where things start to get tough. We're about halfway through the course and the total climbing, my Garmin showed 4,900 feet on the day and there wasn't any really, really massive climbs except for this one. Basically right after this climb, there was another checkpoint. After the checkpoint, we get into this super chunky, gnarly section, big downhill hill section and there's Craig from Topeka he's bombing downhill he does not care there he is saying what's up the winds start to pick up on the way back so this is kind of like an out and back and we rode a lot of the same roads back and on the way back uh, a lot of these stretches of roads it was really difficult because the wind had picked up to like 20 miles an hour here's another creek crossing and all of these creek crossings that you ride across are super sketchy because you don't want to bust a wheel but luckily I didn't have any issues with that and towards the very end 
weekend, there was about 15 miles of road that were all tailwind back into town. So I was absolutely flying. So when I finished the race, it was pretty cool because Kim and Roberto were there to greet me at the finish line. So we loaded up, we went back to Base Camp Flint Hills. I wanna add that Base Camp Flint Hills has a shower house. So I was able to get a shower, so that was awesome. We hung out with Darius and Amy for the night. We had a fire pit, we had a couple beers, a few laughs, and then it was time to get ready for the next day, which was stage two of this gravel race. For stage two of this race, the course was 64 and a half miles, and luckily for us, it was not nearly as hot as it was supposed to be. It was actually overcast for most of the day, and that was a good thing because the pace of this race was full go from the start. Uh, I found myself kind of working with this little group here, and then I got the bright idea to take off and kind of try to do my own thing, and I instantly regretted that as soon as I hit the next road, and I was eating crazy headwinds. But luckily, I was able to catch this guy in the orange who was on a single speed. What a beast. So I rode with him for a while, and then eventually we caught this guy, Joe, who is actually from Kansas City and had on a One Star Bikes kit. Shout out to One Star Bikes. Well, eventually Bobby Thompson, who was in that first group that I left, he caught up with our group. Well, unfortunately, we were only able to ride with Bobby for about a mile because we came up on a nasty, nasty wreck. There was people saying stop. There was, a, I guess, a farmer who lived right by the wreck. Uh, he ran out and had already called 911. Well, Bobby knew the gentleman who had wrecked and he stopped to help him. But, you know, I kind of felt bad. But at this point, you know, I, there was nothing I could do. Uh, the, the, the gentleman who had wrecked had people helping him and they had already called 911. But kudos to Bobby for stopping. And my thoughts and prayers are with the gentleman who wrecked. From what I gathered after the race is he sustained some pretty nasty injuries. So I hope he is healing up and I hope he is doing well. But at this point, it was pretty much get this damn thing done. Luckily for us, the finish was exactly the same as the day before. So like the last 15 miles or so uh, were the same and they were pretty much all tailwind pushing us home. So that was really, really nice. So all in all, it was a great two days of racing. Really, really tough, but I'm really proud of my effort. I gave everything I had and that's all I can ask of myself. I want to give a special shout out to everybody involved with this race, including the volunteers. Everybody at the aid stations was super, super nice. Just really genuinely good people. The girls handing out drinks after the race and ring, ringing the bell, encouraging people. A special shout out to Amy and her son, Ty, who are now kind of the main organizers of this event. And then a shout out to Matt Brown. Matt Brown used to own High gear cyclery but him and his wife just recently sold the shop they are moving to texas just by the border of mexico and they do a lot of nonprofit work where they basically get people on bikes who use bikes for transportation uh getting to and from school to and from work he showed me above their shop and there is literally thousands of bikes who people from the the neighboring areas and people in kansas have donated it was truly incredible i've never seen so many bikes in one place and he's actually taking these bikes in like shipments down to Texas and Mexico to fix them up and get people riding them. So how cool is that? But I want to say uh, amazing event, um, amazing route, amazing people. But guys, thanks for checking out the video. Remember to hit that subscribe button, like, share, comment, and until next time, keep crushing it.